the National Broadcasting Company invites you to meet Dyke Easter, Detective. Dyke Easter. Mr. Easter, what's your price to help a man beat a murder charge? That depends on whether or not he is guilty. Murder is my business. <laughs> National Broadcasting Company presents Dyke Easter, Detective, with Albert Hecht as Dyke Easter and the case he calls This Time for Creeps. Dyke Easter, Detective, a solid phrase. Looks good in my red book ad. I earned the price of that ad by letting a paranoid bookbinder empty a gun at me. (laughs) <laughs> that proved he needed mental treatment. I don't know what it proved about me, except that murder is my business. You can cry on my shoulder or ask me to stop bullets with my teeth for $25 a day. And what have I got to show for it? A few assorted scars, a broken knuckle, a two-by-four office, one desk, two chairs, one filing cabinet, a private detective's license, and a telephone. I sit by that phone all day, and it's silent as a shelf in the morgue. You tell me why everybody gets pains at night, pains that need a doctor or a detective. Like that night. Easter, you didn't understand me. I said I killed a man. What'd you expect? Congratulations. I've got to see you right away. The any money? Answer me or hang up. I'll get some money. Okay. Come up to the office. And remember, I don't take checks. Ah, Creepy characters. I could write a book about them. But James Tabor would need a chapter. Mouse size with mouth face, gray skin, darting eyes, mouth voice. He even smelled like a mouse. And he was as terrified as a mouse. He dared me to kill him. He wanted to die. He kept laughing at me, urging me to pull the trigger. It was practically suicide. Suicide. He can't convict me for that. Relax, Tabor. Are you sure this what's-his-name is dead? That's Alec. He wasn't six feet from me when I shot him. He's dead. Gun? What? The gun you used. Let's have it. I threw it away. Down the sewer. Good night, Tabor. I don't want the case. Good night. No. I've got to have help. I'll pay you. Look. I've got money. Give me the gun. Yeah. How did you know? It was bulging in your pocket. Smith and Wesson, 45. <laughs> Small cannon. I bought it at a pawn shop this morning. Yeah, that was brainy. Recently fired, one shotgun. Tabor, what you need is a lawyer. A good lawyer. Well, that's the way you feel about it. Put your hands up. Uh, don't point a gun at me, Tabor. I don't like it. If still you'll help me or I'll kill you too. I'd just as soon die for two as for one. If you don't swag your... Uh, uh, kill me. I'm dying. I got a bad heart. Uh, uh, I died. Uh, Shut up. Well, up. Uh, sit down. Uh, uh, you shouldn't have hit me. I told you I didn't like guns pointed at me. I'm crazy with fear. You're my only kid. All right, I'll do what I can. But first, this gun gets locked up. Why did you kill Arlac? I hated him. He ruined my life. You're a big help. Where's he live? 1517 Cornelia Drive. Are you going there? I don't promise a thing. How much money have you got? $300? It isn't much. But it'll do for a start. So there I was with $300 in my pocket driving out into the suburbs 11 at night 
to take a look at the late Max Eilach. I'd look at stranger things for less money. A trolley car passes a stop before 1517 Camellia Drive. Oh, too bad. Even though they kept going, I got out, looked around. The house was a 50 grand suburban mansion as prosperous looking as U.S. Steel. I walked up the driveway like any honest citizen. The lights were on in the downstairs window. I knocked at the door. Why not? Do you know any easier way of getting into a house? Yes. Is this where Titus Piper lives? You've got the wrong house. I made a mistake. I am not looking for Titus Piper. I'm looking for Max Arlack. I'm Max Arlack. What do you want? <laughs> what are you laughing at? A $300 joke on Tabor. He thinks he killed you if you're Arlack. Who are you? Private detective. I'm supposed to look at your remains. Come in. The same pictures all over the place. All of the same man. A big, square-faced, jolly man who looked like he ate a six-course dinner every evening of his life. Portraits and pictures on horseback poses at the beach. Others shaking hands with people. Dozens of pictures. Are you convinced that I'm Max Arlick? You're the man in these pictures. You like to look at yourself, don't you? Photography is my hobby. What do you do for a living? Now, see here, whatever you're doing. Sir, as you can see, I am in no way injured. This is somebody's idea of a joke. (laughs) Well, expensive, too. It's almost midnight. What else do you want to know before you go? What does Tabor have against you? Tabor is an evil little animal. Good night, Easter. Don't get sore, Mr. Arlack. I'm just making a living. Uh, will you prefer any charges against Tabor? No, since nothing happened. Does that satisfy you? Yeah, thanks. By the way, Mr. Arlack, it's none of my business, but if nothing happens, why is this rug blood stained? <laughs> You make money hard, and then you make money easy. This was one of the easy times. Tabor missed our lack, or he winged him. Who cares as long as there was no squawk? <laughs> $300 for a night's work. A pleasure. I didn't bother going into the office the next morning until after 10 o'clock. When he makes the buck, he makes the work. Oh, this is a smart eye, killer. Look how relaxed he is. You two got the makings of an act. What are you, city or county police? Randy's careful. You tell us which, Easton. Every county. City cops do a cleaner search job. These two had the place torn up, files all over the floor, and the fat one was holding the gun had taken from Tabor the night before. There's no use getting sore. The sanitation commissioner can't revoke a private detective's license. Practically anybody else can. Look, Shiver. He doesn't know. Prowl car took your number last night, Easter. Where's Tabor? Hmm. I don't know. Why? Max Arlack was murdered. The sheriff wants Tabor. But he might settle for you. In there. Sure. Come in, Easter. Have a chair. Thanks, sir. Did Schiller take you down to look at Arlach's body? Yes, sir. Is it the same body you saw last night? Sheriff, Arlach was alive when I saw him last night. Now, I want to like you, Easter. You listen to me. Tabor came to you last night, admitted killing Arlach around 10 o'clock. He needed an alibi. You agreed to say that Arlach was alive at midnight and was killed thereafter by person or persons unknown. Right or wrong? I don't sell alibis, Sheriff. Arlack was a liar. You want to have more sense than to protect a client in a murder charge? Where's Tabor? I don't know. Bring in the ballistics report on Easter Smith and Wesson. Sir, if I took that gun from Tabor last night, it was locked up in my desk. Don't make me lose my faith in you, Easter. Here's the report you wanted, sir. Oh, thanks, Schiller. Uh, that's all. Uh, wait outside, sir. I got... Two pictures here. One, the bullet from Arlach's body. The other, a test shot fired from the gun in your desk. They match. You want to see them? 
I believe you, Sheriff. Okay. Now, either Tabor used this gun on our like at 10 o'clock, then gave it to you, or you used it on our like yourself at midnight. Take your choice. I'm ready to make a statement, Sheriff. Sing loud and sweet. Tabor killed Arlac. Not at 10, but after midnight. He him at the desk after I left. He took the gun, killed Arlac, uh, brought the gun back. Where's Tabor? Sheriff, if you'll check the autopsy report, you'll find Arlac was alive at midnight. The house was warm. We can't check that close. I feel sorry for guys like you, Easton. Once more, where's Tabor? I don't know. I hate to do this. Oh. Yeah. Where's Tabor? I don't know. Killer, come in here. After ten years, you learn to rock with a punch. Take a few on your elbows and shoulders. That's easier than losing your license. They you needed Tabor. I needed him, too. But I couldn't expect them to believe that. Where's Tabor? <coughs> That's enough. He doesn't know. Maybe not. But now he earned his money. <laughs> it was 2 o'clock when I got back to the office. I called the message taking service. Was Jack Easter anything from me? No messages, Mr. Thanks. That second click was the wire being tapped. I didn't care. Across the street from my office, two men sat in a car and commenced to study the racing form. I didn't care about them either. The only thing in the whole wide world I cared about was having that telephone ring, hearing Tabor's mouth voice and getting to him just one minute ahead of anybody else. I waited all day, all evening. I was willing to wait a month. At one thirty in the morning... Hello, Jack Easter speaking. This is Tabor. I've got to see you. Sure. Any place you say. Your office isn't safe. There's a house at the foot of Harvard Street. I'll be on the third floor. Hurry. Don't worry. I'll hurry. I could see the car trailing me. About half a block behind. I was careful not to lose them. They were careful about not getting any closer. I drove through empty streets to the river. Down Harbor Street. Hello? Yes, Mr. on the outer window ledge, framed against the glass. Mister, I just know it was all a mistake. I can't fight. I wanted him to shoot her. I made myself a big, juicy target for his shot. It caught me in the shoulder, but it didn't stop me. Keep away from me. I'll jump. I'll jump out the window. Oh. Ah. I didn't shoot him. I didn't have to. Chiller took care of that for me. Tabor jumped out of the window with a bullet ripping into his body, flung him out. What's the difference? He was dead before he hit the water. Autopsy proved that when they fished him out four days later. He had seven slugs in him. I read all about it in the papers. I knew as much about the case as anybody else. With five cents. You let us go in, Easter. I appreciate that. Don't mention it. The body was identified by his wife, uh, his ex-wife. Tabor was a former partner in our like investment banking company. Got squeezed out. He killed our like for revenge. As simple as that. Why, tell me. Tabor shooting you proved you weren't working together. The case is closed. The case was closed. 
Everybody happy except Easter, the chump. I could spend two months getting a bullet hole in my shoulder healing and figure out how a man who gets hit by six police bullets comes out of a river with seven slugs in his body. Well, uh, I, I, I shouldn't be doing this, right? There's rules against it. Will ten dollars help you forget the rules? Uh, Twenty, Mike. Okay. Huh. Here's a file. Let's see. Harry Tabor, maiden name, Harry Crowder, age 28, 52, brunette, married, Joseph Taylor, house 18, 1941, no divorce. Mm-hmm. Separated, 1947, identified body of that of her husband, corroborative identification by... Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 skip that part. Where does she live now? Uh, 208 Oak Street Terrace. Ah, thanks a lot, guys. Oglesby Terrace was a rooming house, the kind that makes up in desperate respectability for its lack of private baths. Is this Taylor in home? I could wait for her upstairs. No. Well, then, if you could tell me where she works, I'm an old friend. If you're an old friend, you know where she works. Some evening, you wait outside a rooming house. Take a rainy night two days after a bullet was taken out of your shoulder. Watch the tenants coming home, some at six, some at eight. 10, 12, or any other sweet time they feel like. Then tell me which one of them is the 28-year-old 5'2 brunette who answers to the name of Harriet Tabor. No, I'm Lola Duncan. I'm sorry, excuse it. Oh, that's all right. I'm willing to get acquainted. Be a detective. Shadow people make big money. I'll bet I spent two years of my life waiting on street corners for people who never showed up. Do you like rain? Tell me about it. It's two o'clock in the morning. Excuse me, miss. I want to ask you. Uh, awful wet. Sorry. I, I mean... Gee, you're sick. You shouldn't be out here in the rain. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting. I have to wait. You come inside with me this second. You can wait in the car. Don't make any noise, Mrs. Martinez. is a terror. When you feel better or when the rain stops, you can leave. Just close the front door. It's a spring lock. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's all right. Good night. Good night. Uh, what's your name, Miss? Harriet Tabor. Good night. Mm-hmm. Thin-faced, half-tired girl in a sleazy fur coat yanked her out of the rain so you won't get pneumonia. Now you can show your gratitude. Figure out an angle to connect you with a murder. Jam and eggs, sunny side up, short and coffee. Hurry it up, will you, sister? Yes, sir. Afternoon, Miss Tabor. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Hello there. What are you doing here? No, I saw you through the window. Thought I'd come in and say thanks properly. Look, sisters, I only got a half an hour to eat. Give us a break, will you? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm very sorry. Tell me, I'm sunny side and order up and travel. What time do you get off, Miss Faber? This is my early evening, and so it's six. I'll meet you outside. You sure you want? My name is Dick Easter. I'll be waiting at six. Dyke Easter. That's easy to remember. At six. If you like. Well, that's settled. Maybe I can get my ham and eggs, huh? Tea and toast is all I want. No, wait. What kind of dinner is that? Oh, too tired to eat. When you handle food all day long, you can't. Tell me something about yourself, Mr. Easter. Been at it very long, waiting on table? Ever since about two years ago. Who were you waiting for last night? Hmm? The guy owes me money. Been working since you left your husband? You know about that? <laughs> when I'm interested in a girl, I like to know all about her. Oh. I'm a widow now. Completely free. <laughs> you think I'm bold. I'm only lonely. Are you lonely, Mr. Hmm. 
Not now. Call me, Dice. 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 You need somebody to look after you, Harriet. Somebody like me. Wait a... Yes, sir. Two steaks, french fried potatoes, chef salad. We'll order dessert later. Dice. <laughs> okay, so I'm a monster. I play on the emotions of heartbroken widows. You name it, I'm it. But that doesn't say at all. My business is murder. I'm like a hunting dog. You can't shoot over my head and tell me to forget the quarry. A cop puts six bullets into a man. He comes out of the river with seven plugs in him. Where does the seventh bullet come from? I have to know. I have to know. Wouldn't you like to put your arm around your girl? Guys, something the matter? No. Yes. Harriet, there's something I've got to find out. Anything, Dyke, anything. Just ask me. What really happened to your husband? What's the down here, Dyke? Breeze off the water is so cool. Harriet, I have to know. Of course, I can. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. I could tell you so much. Your husband. He was killed by the police. He murdered a man. The police trapped him and shot him. I know that part, but why? I left him two years before it happened, I. Is there nothing else you want to know? Yes, there is. You knew all that. You must have known him. He and your husband were partners. Max Arlett was a strange man. He lived alone. Nobody knew him. He was in love with Dyke. you. Dyke, look at me. Do you believe that? I don't know what to believe. I'm not a pretty woman, Dyke. No, no, no. Oh. Don't protest. You made me feel pretty and desirable. But I'm not. Not really. I was the kind Jim wanted. Somebody he could rule. Not the kind who'd appeal to Max Arlett. Dyke, <laughs> I'm sorry, Harriet. Forget a mention. No, I've been waiting for you to mention it. In the beginning, Jim and Max and Vern were part. Vern? Vern Pollard. He put up the money to get Jim and Max started. Jim couldn't stand money. There never was enough for him. Max only wanted power. They told me Max found Jim stealing. Well, maybe he did. Jim was forced out of the company, so he killed Max. Does that tell you anything? Maybe it does. Is that all you have to say? It could be a lead. Could it? I'm glad. Good night, Doc. Good hmm? night. Where are you going? Home. Doc, you forgot about the papers. They had your name in it. I knew it all the time, and I... I wouldn't think about it. Doc, you're not lonely. Your anger keeps you warm. <laughs> felt like something that crawled out from under a rock? No? You're lucky. I let her go. I watched the thin, proud back move swiftly along the boardwalk, turn a corner without hesitation. She was gone. She'd never forgive me. Never. Gave you the brush off, eh? Yeah. Hello, Schiller. Been following us? Yeah. <laughs> you never learn, do you? I'm stubborn. <laughs> Schiller, suppose you led the cops to a client's hideout, not accidentally, but deliberately. When is the next time anybody would ever trust you unless you cleaned up the whole mess? There's that. But you heard the sheriff. The case is closed. Sure it is. That's why you've been shadowing me. Easter, you're not the only one with free time, and I can count up to seven. Seven slugs in a man's body when there should be six. Vern Pollard, the silent partner, he's a natural. You don't give us much credit, do you? We turned him inside out. No use. The thing is airtight. But it doesn't make sense. And that seventh slug. Look, Easter, I owe you something for the shellacking you took. Here it is. Get your license transferred to another city. You might live longer. I don't know why I kept hanging around Harriet's rooming house. I knew she wouldn't talk to me. I didn't even try to bother her. You go along for days, weeks. Nothing happens. And then the sky falls on you. It was one of her early evenings. 
From the doorway across the street, I watched her walking toward the house. Hey, come over here. like a magician's illusion. You see it happening, but you know it can't be true. It has to be a trick. The voice was Jim Tabor's. The mouth face above the wheel was Jim Tabor's. But Tabor had been buried a month ago with seven slugs in his body. Harriet identified the body, so did the dentist. Yet now, here before my eyes, Harriet had stepped into a car with him, and they were getting away. <laughs> I got to my car or started it. It was like a wild dream. One moment you're standing alone on the street, the next you're behind the wheel of a car, and the only thing in the world that's important is to catch up. So stop the meetings, you have to crash into them. They knew I was following them. We tried every trick in the book to shake me. Harriet. I thought she was a starling. I was sorry for her. <laughs> that's a laugh, isn't it? The tougher they are, the harder they fall. Dyke Easter, whip him, shoot him, tear his heart out. He got paid for it, didn't he? A police car. He came up from behind for the rush, threw a breath, passed me. Tabor must have heard it. He tried a sharp turn into a tight road. I'm coming for you. Shoot! Shoot! He's back, Easter. He's mine. I want him alive. Come out, Pollard, with your hands up. The figure that crawled out of the wreck was Jim Tabor, the gray mouse face, the darting eyes. Beyond him, I could see Harriet slumped down in the seat. He's coming, Pollard. Pollard, you're crazy. He's Jim Tabor. That's what you think. Fred Pollard, I arrest you for the murder of Jim Tabor and Max. <laughs> You thought I was playing a game with you, Dyke. That I thought it was burn to kill my husband. I thought all kinds of things. Dyke. Oh, how many times I spoke your name. Dyke. I'm so sorry for you, Dyke. I was wrong. You are lonely. Unapproachably lonely. And sad. Harriet, when you spend a lifetime watching evil and greed and violence, it drains you. Ah, forget it. The legal business is all untangled. You'll inherit your husband's full share in the investment corporation. A lot of money. Fern confessed? Yeah. Killer is very persuasive. First, Vern and Arlac killed your husband at Arlac's house. Then Vern came to me and pretended to be Jim Tabor, confessed Arlac's murder. The police discount the time discrepancy. A greedy detective is lying for reasons of his own. Then Vern propped up Jim Tabor's body in a window, hides himself on an outer ledge, goads the police into shooting an already dead man. Then why did Vern try to kill me? You were his last danger. Schiller told him I was seeing you. Vern knew that sooner or later you'd describe Jim to me. So what's another murder? Easy. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it was. You worked on the case for months. I should be grateful. Hey. Schiller cracked it. Take it up with him. You got Schiller started on it again. He told me that. Let me tell you, Dyke. I never paid you for anything. No. No, you didn't. And you got money now. You think you can pay me for anything? For beatings and bullets in the shoulder and a few assorted scars. No. You can't pay me. Not with money. Dyke. Now I'm paid off. Mark the account square. Shut the book. Why not? I'm Dyke Easter. I work for pay. Murder is my business.